Hi, I'm Kenneth Mays. I've um, actually uh, been a long-term member of the International Academy of Cardiology, and it's a pleasure to be here again at the 21st meeting. I've served on the Executive Committee and the Scientific Committee for many years, and today uh, we're actually presenting some work that involves translating very basic cellular pathways for regenerative uh, medicine that would improve cardiac care, cardiac ischemic care, and the pathways we talked about today actually are quite novel. They focus on the mammalian target of rapamycin. And why we selected this pathway, because if you step back and you look at the aging process in individuals, globally the um, age has increased through all populations, so that's a very good thing. So there's an extended lifespan. However, uh, paralleling that exact uh, extended lifespan is an increase in diseases, and particularly cardiac disease is the number one disease, disease that has increased for non-communicable diseases. So it's important to target this disease in many different avenues. One particular avenue involves a mammalian target of rapamycin, mTOR, also known as a mechanistic target of rapamycin, because this pathway not only is involved in cell protection, but it's also involved in extended lifespan. So what we've done is actually looked at mTOR, dissected certain pathways of mTOR that involve mTORC1, and in particular, we're looking at a pathway that's noted as PRAS40. PRAS40 is kind of a, a break pathway. It can stop the activity of mTOR. However, in many situations, mTOR increased activity can be protective, and it can actually lead to stem cell development. What we've been able to show that the, PRAS40 is a key pathway in blocking, or actually not so much blocking all the time, but controlling in a fine biologic manner. And by doing that, one can actually extend the lifespan or even increase stem cell proliferation. We're also shown that linked to PRAS40 is a fine um, ability to control pathways of programmed cell death. Now, these pathways involve apoptosis and autophagy. Each of these pathways are very complicated, but they are clearly involved in clinical disease, such as in cardiac ischemia. So by focusing on PRAS40 and other regulatory pathways, such as protein kinase B that control this, we can then filter back to where the mTOR pathway needs to be uh, controlled and actually actually to develop new drugs for it. In many cases right now, mTOR is very big in, in, in the nervous system as well as oncology. So there are, there are drugs such as um, rapamycin derivatives that actually control mTOR to inhibit it in some ways. However, um, another pathway that was linked to this that we found recently involves wind signaling or WISP-1. These, um, this particular pathway is important because it also is very crucial and vital for stem cell development. And we've shown that recently that WISP-1 also controls PRAS-4 and is tightly linked to mTOR. So um, these four pathways, which are mTOR, AKT, PRAS40, and WISP1, are, we believe, to be crucial in understanding what their cellular development is, how they interact with autophagy and apoptosis, and then subsequently developing new therapeutic agents that can control them because they're more of a very specific pathways rather than higher up that would, such as pathways that I talked about rapamycin might control. And therefore, that would increase, hopefully, efficacy for cardiac disease, as well as limit any toxicity that can be seen for some of these pathways. So it's been really a very enjoyable conference, and I think what's important is that, that the conference brings together um, many types of individuals, bring clinicians who actively uh, see patients and are looking at the clinical studies, as well as scientists who look at the very basic levels, and those are who actually do both, look at the physician scientists who actually look at the science and also translate this to the clinical care. So I think it's been a very profitable conference and we look forward to many more.